people say Peloton's a soul cycle killer, flywheel killer. How, how do we respond to that? You know, I think there, there will always be room for both, for the group fitness experience as well as the at home. Uh, no doubt Peloton has changed the landscape drastically. People now can ride at their own convenience and have this great metrics accountable experience in their home. But it's changed in that the days of people taking spin classes in the studio six days a week, they're over. Everyone is kind of doing what is most efficient for them, which means at home and group fitness. Yeah. So I think there's room for both. Well, the, the company got its start, legend has it, because they, they was too hard to get a, a, classes were filled and they said, let's make a bike so people don't have to rush it Monday at noon and try to get into that instructor that we love so much. That's right? exactly right. And Peloton built a great group of instructors. In fact, one of our greatest instructors at Flywheel went over there, Alex Toussaint, who's a rock star. And I'm so happy for him. How do you take on the question, Ruth, about whether cycling, Peloton, SoulCycle, Flywheel are just fads? Like so many fitness fads we've seen before. The Thigh Master, I think, is getting a lot of play in the news as people write about this story. It's funny. Back in the day, I remember when we were starting Flywheel and potential investors would ask me just that question, isn't it a fad? I never believed it was. And the reason was, first and foremost, it's a really safe workout. It's low impact. I have riders from age 18 to 75. So you can do it throughout your life. And as we know, it's all about health and wellness now and longevity and how we stay healthy. And that's why I've always thought spinning was here to stay. One of the one of the knocks on Peloton, and I guess to some degree on, on Seoul, is that it's expensive, right? It's so niche uh, because of the price point, maybe the geographic uh, dispersion. What do you, how, to what degree do these companies need to start addressing the lower end, making things cheaper? to a big degree, and it's actually already happening. I, I've heard rumblings of some companies that are starting up to offer spinning to a different demographic, and I think it's so important. Uh, you think it works outside of big urban centers? Absolutely. Really? Yes, I do. Who, I, who are your target customers? Right now? Average income, you know, I mean, what can you tell us about them? Uh, it's, you know, definitely people who end up in a higher price point demographic because they're putting so much focus on health and wellness. I mean, they can afford to, and that pretty much does make up the demographic, the one that you're talking about. But everyone wants to be, you know, healthy and well and, and grow, grow old. And so I think there is room for the market to expand to different demographics for sure. Do you need to pay $2,200 for a bike to get into your living room? I mean, that's one of the questions facing investors for a Peloton today. No, I think that there, again, I think there's room for a different bike that is, that doesn't have to be that expensive with, you know, talented instructors. Absolutely. Are you surprised? I mean, what, what do you tell investors who wonder why Seoul hasn't come public? Hard for me to speak to that just because I've been apart from the company for so long. Uh, but, you know, so much of the group fitness experience is not about um, a formula. It's, there's kind of this one area of it, which is so important, that has to do with kind of a certain spirituality and connection and human connection. And sometimes that's not something you can chart or figure out in a formulaic way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Seoul pulled the IPO, right? Last year, they cited market conditions. Some of the analysts were speculating maybe it had just gotten too crowded, that there were so many spin studios yes. that now that there, there are pressure on prices. Is that a yes. phenomenon you see? I think that is part of it. And yes, the industry has changed so much. It's so oversaturated. Boutique fitness is everywhere. Uh, one of the things people will watch today is, and, and the weeks to come is how Peloton addresses concerns about streaming music rights. Yes. How big a deal is that? And can you explain it to people who have no idea what we're talking about? It's a big deal. Back in the day when we started Soul in 2006 or even Flywheel in 2010, we weren't that you know, cognizant of it, that it would be a problem. But instructors are pulling music from all kinds of places, YouTube, remixes, mashups that, you know, artists are not profiting from. So it, you know, now that it's so mainstream, it's become a problem. Well, and it's one thing if you play it in a room, it's another if you're streaming it literally on the internet, right? Exactly. And so I, I do feel with Peloton, it just drew so much more attention to the issue. Have you tried the $4,000 treadmill? I have not. I've heard great things about it. And people say you can almost, you know, walk. it could walk by itself. But I have not tried it personally, but I heard it's great. I mean, you sound fairly optimistic about a company that's a big competitor. Would you buy a piece of this IPO? Uh, very good question. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not sure. I've thought about it. Not sure. But John Foley, who started Peloton, has always been a friend, and I'm, I'm happy for him. Yeah, he's, uh, he's worked very hard. He has. Um, finally, Flywheel. Yes. And going public. Yes. Will there be a connection there one day? I don't know. I never say never. Does it depend on how this goes, maybe? <laughs> I think that will be yeah. one factor. Uh, certainly driving investor interest into the space. Absolutely. And we, and we've had other success stories. Planet Fitness has done great. I know. Right? So Absolutely. We'll see if, if you never know. Goes. Ruth, thank you. Thank you for having uh, me. By the way, her book, Riding High, is out now. Came out last October. Last October. Yes. Uh, and is a good look at the industry. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.